Hey guys, we're back. It's Dubai Watch Week 2023. Amazing, amazing things. And I'm here with one of my very, very good friends, Omar Shawi. How are you doing today, Omar? I'm good, bro. Good, good. to see you. Omar is an industry veteran since 2003, uh, GPHG jury member 2021, um, FHH instructor when I first met him here in Dubai 2019. Forget all that. Amazing host. I remember you had such an amazing time. Thanksgiving 2019. Yes, Thanksgiving 2019. Absolutely, yes. You know, away from everybody. Um, and then me and, you know, some friends when you first came here, Omar, amazing night, amazing villa, great, you know, authentic food. And I, I remember we just had this great conversation that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, Hans was there. Yeah. Uh, who else, Mike? I yeah, think. exactly. We, Couple we had, of guys, yeah. We, we had a, a, good, a good team there, and we just had a great conversation. And then... I cracked into your watch brain, and then you're a talker, I'm a talker, and like hours <laughs> went by. And you know, uh, so I think about two years ago, right by now, you, you came to me, you, you sent me a text message, and you're like, hey, CQ, you're around, I wanna show you something. So I'm like, sure, come on. And then you come and you say, hey, so I wanna start a watch brand. And I'm like, you know, this is a big task, right? And you start showing me the designs, and it's like, wow, I think this can be something really, really amazing. So now we're here in 2023, Dubai Watching 2023, and I can touch and feel these pieces, and it is such a surreal moment to just see, you know, from the PDF to actual <laughs> pieces. So before we open the box, I want you to tell people a little bit uh, about what make you want to actually create your own brand and the inspiration behind going this direction with it. Uh, well... First, thank you so much for, for being here and thanks for this, for this opportunity to speak about it. Um, it so uh, I've been in the watch industry since 2003. I uh, started with Beaumont Mercier uh, and I was supposed to train people. Yes. So I get sent to Switzerland to spend about a week to get trained myself, right? And in that week, I spent about three days in Fribourg in a Swiss watchmaking school that uh, was part of the Richmond Group. Uh, the gentleman, the master watchmaker, may he rest in peace, uh, brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, shit, I can't remember his name. Christophe something. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, he, 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 he talked to us about watches and watchmaking throughout history and whatnot. And for the first time in my life, I was 25, 26. All the stuff we learned in school, mathematics, physics, chemistry, all of that made sense inside a watch, yeah. you know? And that's really when I got the virus. Uh, and, you know, throughout my career, worked with different brands, different retailers, fantastic people I've met who are still friends to this day. And I became a watch lover, a collector, and, uh, you know, I've had my journey with watches like everybody else. Uh, and at some point, at some point, uh, I leave the corporate world back in summer 2018, mm -hmm start my own thing, get into the tech business, do some training, some consulting, and I'm doing okay. Then COVID hits, things Crazy get rough. <laughs> things get yeah. really rough. Um, and I find myself, you know, trying to make ends meet. And because I love watches and, uh, you know, it's always easy to talk about it for me. At yes. Least, right? Like for <laughs> yeah. you, I guess. Uh, and I, beca I became a sort of consultant advisor to friends and acquaintances and friends of friends on how they curate their collection. So I'm in a position with my knowledge and my network to tell them, all right, you have a 20, 30, 50 piece collection. Let's see what has an emotional value that we put aside. What doesn't, which one you wear the most, which one you wear the least. That can be fine their collection. Exactly. And so we'll, we'll help them sell the ones they don't really look after. Uh, or use and help them acquire watches that make sense in their collection so they have a more curated collection. And I'm doing okay. Yeah. Summer 21, I'm um, in France. I'm um, invited with my family to spend a week at, uh, at a friend's uh, uh, vacation home. And two or three days before, uh, I'm in Paris. I'm wearing my Daytona I'm in the street, walking to meet somebody. Somebody grabs my arm. Oh, wow. And I immediately understand my watch is getting stolen. So I pull away, my watch still on my wrist, and I run in the opposite direction. And as I do that, I'm looking at the guy who didn't get it and started running on the other side. By the time I turn around, I'm at the end of the sidewalk, and I stumble and I fall on the asphalt. Oh, wow. Like this, right? And as I fall, there's a car that drives by. I mean, you guys say inches, right? Like yeah. 10 centimeters more, it would have hit my head, right? Oh, wow. 
And that was like the eureka moment in yes. a way, yeah, you know, epiphany. I was like, shit, what if I died? Uh. My business, the, this curating consulting business for watch mm -hmm. collector, can't survive me. Oh. So my kids can't inherit anything. Exactly. I mean, you have a couple of assets, life insurance, whatever, yeah, but, but business runs and, and my kids are still young, so, so they wouldn't remember anything. I was like, ah, shit. so you could have lost your life for a watch. No. And you're an entrepreneur with a business that can't do anything without you. Exactly. That's stupid. Yeah. So I need to create a business that can survive me. And while I'm at it, might as well create something that talks to me and that can carry uh, some sort of legacy for my kids. What do I know? Watches. What do I like? Watches. Screw this. I'm going to do a watch brand without having any clue on how to go about making a watch. Because throughout my career, I've always been based in Dubai since 1999. I moved here from Morocco. And, um, and I've always worked on the commercial development side, marketing, training, merchandising, you Whenever know, everything but making the watch, yeah. right? So three days later, we join my friend at his vacation home and he introduces us to the other people who are staying the same week, including his father-in-law, who is a Swiss gentleman. And we get to talking, and uh, he's in the watch industry, and so am I. And there's some name dropping, yeah. of course. <laughs> As we do. And at some point, I realized the gentleman knows everybody. And when I say everybody, everybody. I mean everybody. At some point, I was like, hang on, hang on. Who are you? I never heard your name. Yeah, right. seen <laughs> Who are you? And the guy starts smiling. And he's like, you know, I'm a behind-the-scenes guy. Yeah. You know that product, this product, that thing. So I'm not going to disclose anything, of course. Of course but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I subcontract for brands to make these kind of products in Switzerland. I was like, ah. Anywhere else, it was like, well, for the stuff, you know, like the wall clocks and whatnot, those we made in China. And yeah. we have factories in Hong Kong and China and Japan and Switzerland. And it was like, funny, I meet you today because three days ago, I decided to create a watch brand. And I have no clue on how to make a watch. He was like, well, I can make a watch, but I have no clue how to do anything else about <laughs> right. the watch. Okay, match made, made in heaven. Mm -hmm. The next day, we jump on a Zoom call with, uh, with one of his guys in Hong Kong. Uh, and we started, we got to work. And so today, he's my main supplier. And this exists thanks to this gentleman. Wow. So his first name is Daniel. I'm not going to say his last <laughs> name. I don't want to create any yeah, trouble. Uh, but, well, wow, so, you know, I, I've never heard the first part of that story, to be honest. So that's why I'm like a little taken back. Gotta, like, gotta yeah, yeah, right. Some stuff, yeah, right. right? <laughs> but um, so this was meant to be. For, for, from an incident like that, you know, with you being there in, uh, in the vacation house and everything, it was kind of meant to be. And thankfully, you weren't hurt or no, too badly in no, that situation. That. But it gave you the eureka moment, the spark to take a little bit of risk, to create something for your legacy, you know, something that would live on beyond, beyond your years and hopefully many, many, many generations in the hopefully, future. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, Not there yet, but... Yeah, so, so man, that, that's amazing. So let's, let's dive into the product here. So first of all... Um, we, we had a long conversation last night about, you know, not only the watch, but the whole presentation. You know, what do you get with a watch when it comes? Um, what's important? What do people want to feel when they first receive something? And, you know, we got to boxes and you're like, listen, I, I got to tell you something. I put some heart and soul into this box and this will probably be one of the best watch boxes you've ever seen. And I'm here to tell you that this is probably one of the best watch presentation boxes I've seen, especially when we're not talking about fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollar watch, right? Yeah, yeah. And even I can, you know, not name brands, but I've seen some very, very expensive brands that don't give you something, you know, that you really want to keep around. You know, because the whole thing is you get your box and papers and because we're, you know, so caught up in values and stuff, you want to keep everything, so you put it. But this is something that you get and you want to keep on the coffee table or keep in your library there. So let's open up this beautiful book. I'm going to go pop it. Uh, I got the gloves last yeah. second. <laughs> Same. Let's just put it to the side. Oh, there you go. There you go. So you got a nice little introduction. QR code gives you the user manual, and then there's a tribute to Facebook. And let's kind of explain a little bit about the watch and the presentation here. So the, the whole idea, so going back to that incident in Paris, uh, the whole idea was to make a watch, a mechanical watch, right, with, uh, with a mechanical movement that is sturdy and reliable, uh, that is recognizable, yes. that is well-built, well-finished, and that uh, won't make anyone 
want to risk prison to yeah. steal it from yeah. you, right? It's not <laughs> that expensive. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's not that expensive. Yeah. Uh, and then, as somebody who's been in the industry for a long time and somebody who likes watches, just like you said, we buy watches and we tend to keep the box and the papers because, you know, got, if you ever need to sell them, that exactly. helps keep value, right? Uh, and I was like, okay, but the problem is, I mean, I have a few watches myself and all the boxes and the papers are in a cupboard somewhere yeah. gathering dust and some of them don't age well. No. As, you know, we, we <laughs> yes. spoke about a, a few of those. So I was like, all right, what, uh, what kind of material should I use? And more importantly, how can I make it so that people keep them and don't mind keeping them? Uh, so there's an angle to, to the brand, uh, which I want to quickly talk no, about. Please. Part of the legacy I want to carry on to my kids. So my kids, uh, they're age 12 and 10 now. Uh, and when they were littler, smaller, yeah. uh, they got into uh, you know, saving the planet. Yeah. Uh, we need to recycle, we need uh, to use less plastic. Which is great, and, uh, <laughs> which is great right? Uh, and they made me buy a Tesla, yeah. amongst other things. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so I was like, okay, what can I do to be sustainable? Yeah. As a small startup brand, I can't afford recycled steel or any yeah, of those. Exactly. This is so what I did is that within the PNL of the brand, I, so you have a line for how much does a movement cost, how much does a do the hands cost, and there's a line that is about trees. So I committed to this NGO based in Washington, D.C. called Trees for the Future. It's uh, trees.org online. And uh, I'm, I'm from Morocco, that's in Africa. And not much is done in Africa or for Africa. So what these guys do, they plan to plant a billion trees between Senegal and Somalia. So when you look at the African map, it's just beneath the Saharan desert that, look, that runs from Morocco all the way to Egypt. Uh, a billion trees. So I reached out to those guys and we have an agreement. Every watch we sell, we finance the planting of 212 trees. It's amazing. Uh, and so in that spirit of being sustainable, the box is sustainable. It's made of carton. Nice. All right, cardboard. Uh, and because I want to tell a story, I decided to make it in the shape of, uh, of a book. Yeah, a beautiful book. <laughs> that uh, coffee table book that you can you know, keep in your library, on your coffee table, uh, whatever. Um, and so... Okay, I ask myself, how can I reduce wastage? User manual, you know? Exactly. User manual, you, if you use it, it's only the one time. Yeah, how many right? times have we, you know, you trade watches? How many exactly. times have we traded watches and like the user manual it's is still, still under sealed? wrap? Absolutely. <laughs> so if you need it, there's a QR code, you scan it, you have it on your phone. Perfect. And since we want to tell a story, uh, this watch is a tribute to FAS, a uh, beautiful city in Morocco where my family originally comes from. And so with a friend of mine back home who's a historian, uh, we've put together this uh, 20, 30 page book about Fez. So if you ever are heading to Morocco and you want a guide, you scan it and you know a little bit about it. So I want to give you a little bit more than what than a watch. Exactly. Right? It, it, no, you're, that's what I love about this is I guess, you know, you created a watch and yes, you know, you, you know we can sell watches. But you actually wanted to create a story. You wanted to connect it to you, your DNA, speak to your culture. And, you know, from the box to the watch, everything throughout, um, you really, really, even just the colors, archways. Um, so let, let's please, let's talk about the watch. All right. H ask away. I don't, I, uh, so, ask away. Uh, you know, again, it's so surreal because, you know, maybe a couple years ago, I just saw pictures of, of you know, images and now to really feel it in person. So first, let's start with the complications we have here and the overall case. I'll just give them a rundown of the technical okay. details. So uh, I noticed being in the, in the industry for so long, I noticed that gentlemen's watches, uh, we'd say below $10,000. Yes. All right. Uh, gentlemen's watches that sell the most uh, would either be three-hand watches followed by chronographs. Yes. Now, three-hand watches, you use all the information. You're wearing a gorgeous t yeah. three-hand date, you use everything, right? If you were wearing a chronograph, a Speedmaster, say, or a, a Monaco, or a Daytona, how often would you use that function? I, I think it's like, we could probably guess 90% or, you, you know, more do not use a chronograph, as it's meant to. Many people just have the, the, the big second hand running. Exactly. But they're not actually timing anything. Absolutely. So, 
Uh, but people still buy chronographs because it look, does look, look good, yes. right? It looks sporty. So I was like, all right, let me give people the look they want. But let me try and give them something useful. So rather than go for a chronograph, I went for this uh, Miyota movement, 9122, uh, automatic movement with about 48 hour power reserve. Nice. Uh, that gives me the day, the date, and the month um, in a chronograph. Uh, format. So you got a full calendar. Exactly. So you got a complete format. calendar uh, with you know your time uh, your time indication. Uh, so that was what I wanted to do in terms of uh, of movement. Then I needed to figure out the design. Exactly. How is this going to look? Yeah. So the first drawings were <laughs> were funky, yeah. to <laughs> say the least, uh, because so many things I want to do and I want to exactly. say, etc. And at some point you need to understand. Refine and refine. Put your ego aside and try to do something that makes sense. Uh, what I wanted was a watch that is well finished, that takes all the boxes when it comes to fine watchmaking in terms of finishing uh, and whatnot. So I didn't touch much the, the movement uh, because I'm not showing it, as you see, it's a solid case back. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still wanted part of my uh, identity to yes. be there. So, this watch is called Tribute to Fast, and the collection of this year is Tribute to Thousand-Year-Old Cities. Uh, so basically, I've defined three key values for the brand, as I was telling yes. you last night. Uh, value of culture, togetherness, and mindfulness. And every year, I want to put one of those values at the forefront of the brand. Yes. So every year, I focus on the single collection. So culture, let's talk about Thousand-Year-Old Cities, and what do I mean by that? Those would be cities where you would see, you would smell, you would taste, touch, hear. Exactly. The, the same stuff your ancestors would have if they visited that place. Exactly. And the first one that came to mind is Fas, exactly. Morocco. Home. <laughs> so if you look at the design of the watch, those medieval cities are usually surrounded by a high wall that protected them from invasion. Exactly. And to get to the city, you need to go gate. through a gate. So you have a gate at 12 and another one at 6. So that's the point. You can also pop up open uh, a beer. Yeah, I, I was thinking that last time. But this, this seems very sturdy, you know? Uh, the next thing was, it, so again, think of those outer walls. If you pass your hand on them, you'll feel some sort of texture. Yes. So we hammered the center of the dial to try and recreate that this texture. texture. Uh, the third element, in the case of Faz, so Faz has a very specific shade of blue that is used in crockery when you, know, when you buy your plates and cups and whatever. Uh, we use that touch of blue on the, on the hand. And, uh, and then at the back, we recreated, this is something we have across the collection, this, uh, this pattern uh, of uh, you know, triangles that comes from what you can find in ancient mosques and ancient uh, Arabic, Arabic palaces, you know, thousand and one nights yeah. kind of thing, uh, because it's, you know, who exactly. I am. Uh, voila. You know, so again, only seen this in pictures almost two years ago. So yesterday was the first time I actually felt this in person and got my eyes on it. And I was so impressed, I have to tell you. First, because, you know, your first watch, you always think, you know, what is the actual product going to be? How is it going to feel? The weight on this is perfect. The case itself is so beautiful. Even before we get to the dial, um, DLC or PVD? Uh, neither. It's IP gun. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is the same kind of finishing you find on those fancy hunting rifles. Okay. Right? You see, they, they look grayish, kind of. Yes. Uh, I went for that on the advice of my, my, my supplier, the yes. gentleman I was talking about. He was saying, look, this is not something that is used a lot in the industry. Um, and it has this nice color to it. Yes. Uh, and it makes you be different. The, the other advantage, so here we are at 0.2 microns, uh, which allows better resistance to scratches. Yes. So will it scratch? Sure, of course. of course, like everything else, but it resists a little more than DLC or PVD. Oh, I love that. See, I didn't know that because the, the case has had a, a very nice richness to us. And I love that you have matte finish but on the edges and on the bevels, you have a beautiful polish. And I think that just really sets off this case. And then, as you said, we go to the gates of the city and the wall. And like in the pictures, it doesn't do it justice when I saw it. True. But these little, just these little perfect curves, it just elegantly like kind of just 
just gives you a unique look to this case that you don't really see elsewhere and really, really well done. And then you go to the dial and the texture in that middle center plate is amazing. The data at six o'clock, everything is so well laid out. The, the beautiful um, turquoise blue there too, just really makes everything stand out um, beautifully. Really nice contrast. And this is just a great looking watch. It, it comes um, on this, uh, I guess you call it a NATO fabric strap, yep. but also on leather strap um, as well. Yep. And this is just like, and what's the retail price on this? Uh, so shipping included, uh, included and without taxes, you're looking at roughly 1600 US. Right. For 1600 US, not much watches, in my opinion, will give you something so unique, something where the passion, the identity, the DNA, like the, the real, like, you know, we, we, talk, we talk for hours just about the work and effort you put into making something that is not just a cookie cutter brand, it's not just something that like, okay, hey, I know a few people, let me just, you know, get, you know, make some things happen and let's just make a watch and sell it. No, you actually took your time and created something from the ground up and say, hey, I, I don't want to make a, you know, crazy $50,000 watch with a, you know, insane um, finishing and all these things. You want to make something accessible, something that you could wear and not get worried about um, being mugged for, <laughs> but you could still show up to um, the watch gathering and stun the crowd. Oh, yeah, In my yeah, opinion, yeah. this is a, a, a Look, true stunner. The music to my ears, but you know, ultimately, like I said, it's uh, it's about telling a story and sharing a message. Uh, the watch is a means to an end; it's not an end in in and of itself. Um, I love watches, and I think that watches can be a great heirloom to pass on to your kids yes. and to the next generations. Uh, I love, you know, what the you know the big guys have done and the, the complications and the level of finishing and all of that. I love it. I respect it, and I'm. It's worth every penny, yes, not a problem. Of course. But over the last, I would say since 2016, 2017, I started noticing people like Ming, like yes. um, what's his name, the, the French guy behind Baltic? Uh, uh, Ed, uh, Edouard, name? is it? I believe it's Edouard. No. We'll, we'll not sure. Somebody will correct us in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Hoffman in yes. New York, uh, and so many others doing some amazing things. And I was like, you know what? They're not watchmakers. I'm not a watchmaker. They're just guys who love watches. Exactly, you kept pushing. And who, and, and who think that sometimes the corporate side of the industry tends to forget that, yes, we are consumers, but many of us are actually passionate. Exactly. And so I want to connect with people to that level. So I don't make many. Each one is limited to 212. Nice. Wow. Um, it's a drop, 212. Once they're sold out, we're, we done. move on to the next. Um, and the idea is for you to have something that is rare. Exactly. And that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. And something that you can be proud of. And as a watch lover, I like changing straps. Yes. Right? I mean, it's half the fun. It's half you know, the fun, I get right? in a fight with people all the time who just, they, yeah. they, 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 they look at a watch and they're like, oh, you know, I like it, but if, uh, they're just afraid to change the strap. But it changes the whole life look. Of, absolutely, of, of, absolutely. Of it, it, it makes your watch anew, right? Exactly. And uh, I have this this friend who's uh, who's based in Dubai. He's uh, he he has a brand of straps called Opto Watch. Okay. Brilliant, right? And I was talking to him, and uh, and I realized that you know people really do like to. So the one thing I did is that the interlock space, I made it at twenty millimeters. Okay. Right? Good size. Which is kind of standard, so um, so people can have the flexibility to get any um, exactly any strap they want. But I also give you a leather strap, so you have this casual look, like I'm wearing it. Exactly. You want to make it a little but formal. You, you got go the for leather. the for the leather strap. Uh, and at you twenty mm, you can. Well, you can you can do whatever. anywhere you can get get shot shot. So this is the first one. So the first drop is a tribute to Fez, and I think we have Absolutely. a second drop that we can show the people. Sure, uh, right? sure, so sure. Maybe a little bit of a world premiere. So let's slide okay. that beautiful book out the way, and you also got a beautiful um, watch pouch with yeah. it as well. I, I do want to. I got I got to show them because this is so cool. Because we've seen watch pouches like this before, but usually you just have one. Um, I don't know the proper term, but you put this in between the watch to keep it yeah. kind of filled. Usually at one size. He actually gave you two sizes. So if you're, you know, you actually adjust your watch, you can fit it perfectly. And I think 
is a little touches like that because you're a true enthusiast and collector. Again, it's from experience. Exactly. <laughs> yes, so you, you think about these things. You know, if, if my wife is taking a watch with her and uses my pouch, it's too big. Exactly. You know, and then it's all kind of jangling around and scratching stuff. So that was the tribute to Fez. Absolutely. And today, now we have the tribute to Istanbul. Again, same logic, thousand-year-old cities, uh, same concept for the, for the box. It's essentially the same watch uh, without the IP gun treatment and with the colors of Turkey. So I don't know if, have you ever been? I've not been to Turkey yet, you know, but you know, we're, me, me, and, me and Mike, we're, we're, we're making a little list that we're going we're gonna to do a tour and we're going right. to see if we can convince so, David to send us We need to remove the, there's a plastic uh, protection on it. Uh, so, Turk Turkish people are very proud people, and rightly so, yes. and uh, they come from a very long history. So, did you know the former name of Istanbul was Constantinople, yes. and before that it was Byzance? I didn't it know that. Was, it was the capital of the Eastern Catholic, uh, Eastern Christian Church, yes. right, by uh, Byzance, and then the Pope Constantine established there and, uh, and made it Christian and named it Constantinople. And at the turn of the century when Ataturk, the father of modern Turkey, um, removed the Ottoman Empire, which controlled most of the Arabic exactly. and Muslim worlds, um, made the country secular, right? Mm -hmm. Removed religion from the equation, named, renamed the city in the 1920s to Istanbul. And Istanbul is really a wonderful, amazing city. Yeah, so One of the biggest things. cities in the world. I mean, 15 million people there. Wow. And the city sits between Europe and Asia and is split in half by the Bosphorus, mm. all right, which uh, basically connects, uh, I don't want to say anything stupid, two seas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's really vibrant and modern. and yeah, It is just fantastic, yeah. great culture. And everywhere you go in Istanbul, there's a Turkish flag right yeah, there. Yeah. And the Turkish flag is basically a big uh, sea of red uh, with a white crescent yep. uh, on it. Uh, so I went for that color scheme. I wow. kept the, the case in steel without any coating, uh, which allows me to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of price positioning with oh, the red this. strap. Um, and, and the straps come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Okay, so perfect. this should be your size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, you have the leather strap. And if you go to Turkey, so with every watch, again, I know that we watch lovers are suckers for, you know, the goodies. Yes, the little we are. <laughs> so, it's all about the, the extras, you so know. So my dream vision is that every watch comes with a little gift, exactly. which Most is not price. announced beforehand. Exactly, no. So just know you're going to get something. Yeah, you're not sure plus. what it is. We don't even show it on the website, right? So in Turkey, the most popular game is backgammon. So backgammon game is said to be dating back to around 5,000 years. Yeah, one of the oldest games. One of the oldest games. It's Oh, look at this. So the idea is to give you this, uh, again, keeping culture in mind. Oh, if you this. travel. Backgammon to go. A backgammon travel set where you have, you know, your dice, your chips, and you can play. And um, oh, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to take this off your hand. This is so <laughs> sure. This sure. is so awesome and like, you know, great. You can take it anywhere with you. Have some fun in the airport before you go. Absolutely. And such a cool gift to get with a watch, right? Not something that you normally you normally see and like. Again, things like this you, you think about because you've been in the industry and you're true enthusiast yourself. And who wouldn't like to get a fun gift like this Absolutely. with a watch? And again, you're not a watch that's you know. Crazy, crazy, very, very accessible. So, so what's the price point on this one? Uh, on this one, we are thirteen fifty. Okay, wow. See, so it's about uh, two seventy, three hundred dollars cheaper. Again, shipping included, and without taxes. All right. So now we have the tribute to Istanbul in hand. And one thing I didn't talk about on the previous version, when you look at the hour markers, is actually hollowed. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, if, for Panerai fans out there, it's kind of like a sandwich dial. So underneath um, that initial dial layer, you have the red markings. And I love that because it just gives you extra depth and texture to the dial as well. And so the Tribute to Istanbul was just released on 11.11. Uh, so recording this, I think today's the, the 19th, I'm not sure. So this is actually available on the website now. Yep. And again, 
I just really enjoy the finishing on the case. I think it's so well done. Um, it's really, really attractive. And then the texture on the dial with the touches of red and then on this red strap is, it's a stunner. You could have a lot, a lot of fun with this. And for, again, for the price point, you think of the brands that are out there and what you get, I just, you really don't see the complete package. Of course, because you're smaller, you're nimble, you can put all those things in, in how you want it to be done and really create an amazing product for collectors. And I definitely invite people, what's the best way for people to, to uh, see the watches, get a watch? So, so unfortunately, I, or fortunately, I, I made a conscious decision coming from the industry not to work with retailers or distributors. Just a direct. Uh, only direct. And that allows me essentially to sell the watches to end consumers at what should have been a wholesale price. Exactly. You know, if stores needed to, to retail my watches, and add their margin, then they, we're looking you at know, a, they need to make a living. Three. Yeah, exactly. So um, the downside is that people don't get to actually hold the watch in their hand unless they know somebody who's got one. Exactly. Uh, and they have to order it online. So they got to take your and my word for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It is a good well, watch. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> you know, I you know, put clarity on that. But uh, uh, amazing in the person. Um, definitely, you know, a brand people would check out. And limited, right? 212 for Fez. 212 for Istanbul. Everything Absolutely. that you drop will be 212, so you get something that's exclusive, something that is unique, something that has real thought, real passion, real DNA behind it, and I can imagine myself grabbing tribute to Fez, going to visit Fez, wearing that watch, grabbing a tribute That'd to Istanbul, cool. and like, you know, so I, I think that's a, a really interesting aspect as well. It makes you want to learn about different cultures, want to explore the world with an amazing timepiece on the wrist. So, yeah, so the 212 thing, uh, not that you asked. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was going to. So the 212 thing, uh, so like I said several times, I'm from Morocco, yeah. very proud. <laughs> uh, the area code to call Morocco is 212. Ah, okay. Right? Uh, Istanbul, one of my favorite cities. If you are in Turkey and you want to call Istanbul, the area code is 212. And another favorite city of mine in the, is uh, New York. Yeah, the area two code two? is 212. Two two. Yeah. Uh, and... The good thing about 212, you'll remember it. Yeah. If it were, we're making 200 of it, or 50, or 25, or you know whatever yeah, number, kinda. you might remember, you might forget. 212 has a knack to it. Yeah, you know, exactly. It sticks. It, 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 it sticks in your head. Oh, man, well, well, Omar, I want to thank you so much for letting me get hands on these pieces. I appreciate the opportunity. Man. Oh, man, guys. Kidding. Check out Magana Watches. Really, really amazing company, amazing brand. And if this is the beginning, you know, I, I can't wait to do part two, part three inshallah. throughout the years, inshallah. And we will see, you know, just I can imagine some amazing things. We'll talk some other stuff we're not going to um, announce as yet. But I think you're going to see some really cool movements. And again, if you want to touch some really unique pieces and get something that has real passion from a real collector, I think Magana is a great place for anybody. To start. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. No problem. Thank you again, Omar. For Welcome back here again with Omar Shui, uh, founder of Magana Watches. We just looked at the new Magana releases that are amazing. And now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your personal collection because you are a collector and a true enthusiast. I knew you would have some goodies for us to take a look at. Uh, I do, I do. So unfortunately, over the last five years as, a, as an entrepreneur, I had to, to unfortunately sell some of my yeah. really... Like, I mean, <laughs> we're talking vagabondage, chronometre bleu, 5711, 5712 Tiffany. Yeah, so some heavy pieces, but RM29. You found it, you know, to fund the baby. You absolutely, know, exactly, absolutely. You know, no, regrets, no, exactly, no regrets, no regrets, no regrets. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the, the collection, unfortunately, reduced in size and, and value, financial value, that is, but emotional value-wise... So strong. Very strong, yeah. very, very strong. Every watch has a story. Uh, like most collectors, yeah. and uh, I actually wear, or I have to be honest, I used to wear yeah. all of them exactly. all the time. Yeah, no safe queens, you know. No, no. Uh, but since I dropped Magana, the first watch, I only wear mm -hmm. Magana exactly. because you should. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I need to talk about it and show it to people and whatnot. So the last watch I bought is the Casquette, which uh, which a retailer friend of mine was kind enough to source for me. I never wore it yet. Yeah, I will, well, it's still, I will still fresh. but it's still fresh. It's still, it's very clean. And uh, I'm thinking about keeping it NOS 
for my son to get uh, oh, when he that, turns 18. That'd be great. He's absolutely. 12 now, so that could be cool. Yeah, but right? that'd be a great, like, you know, university gift, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just a fun, unique watch, has a great history, has a... Um, uh, just great look as well to it, and something funky that nobody else, you know, exactly. on campus is gonna have. I mean, they made only a thousand of them, right? Yeah. So, uh, and these yeah. are when these, you know, the reproductions came out, and you see them in the in the metal. They're so so awesome. I love I love that bracelet too. Great. Tell me, uh, tell me about that Pepsi over there. The patina on that dial is just uh, uh, so. This is a very special watch. So, God forbid, if I ever need to sell all my watches. That's the one that will never get sold. Oh, wow. So this is the, the keeper keeper. So it's always been a favorite of mine. And, um, and uh, so I was born in 1977. In 2017, I turned 40. Now, my wife, Linda, uh, knows that, uh, you know, uh, this is a kid's college fund. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she knows I'm into watches. And she knows a couple of friends of mine who are leaders, Alex and Tarek yeah. from yes, Momentum. Exactly. Right? Yeah, Not well. to name them. Yeah. And she approached them and uh, asked them to source a GMT for my birth year, oh. uh, which they did. And then uh, she had my family and friends to chip in however much you can put. And they put together the money. Oh. And on my birthday, September 15th, 2017, I was gifted this. Look at the condition. Now. Yeah, no, this is super, super clean. And that's also un nice and crispy. Bro. Wow. And polished. It's uh, 46 years old. It's gorgeous <laughs> patina. <laughs> Yeah, the patina on it is perfection. And keeps perfect time, and uh, so I'm actually thinking for next year's Magana to use a GMT uh, yeah. version. Yeah, oh, that'd be cool. I, I I'd love to see it. Um, I, I love you know vintage Pepsi. I love vintage Rolex. Um, period, just because they have just such as I don't know, they have a character. Is, to speak. is that a Pepsi or a Superman? I don't know. We, 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 not, not, what's a Superman? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that those are Superman's colors. It is Superman's they? colors. You know, I always wondered who, <laughs> you know, because like the, every new Rolex release, you know, like now there's a two-ton GMT, so is it the Guinness or, or is it our so couple here's names? Here's the thing. I don't drink Pepsi. Yeah. I'm a Coke guy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I like that. So we call it a Superman. Yeah. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> and maybe we, we could change the world. One, yeah. one watch at a time, just saw Connor Superman. Well, this Superman is in excellent condition, and it is a beauty, and I don't know, the patina. Such a special gift as well. It is. You know, to be the I bird mean, ear watch and have everybody chipped in. So, you know, the whole family has a little a little piece of it there. I do, I do like the idea of a birth year watch, yes. you know? Uh, which reminds me, I need to get a birth year... Rolex for my kids. Yeah, you before know. they get too crazy. E exactly. Right? Yeah, you know this is this is the time. Before. Anyone's got a Daytona twenty eleven? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> exactly. True. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Now let's since you know we're talking about Daytonas, uh, let's talk about this beautiful, beautiful piece six two, here. Six two six five big red. Six two six five big red again. Excellent, excellent condition. Tell the people a little bit about that beauty. All right. So again, the condition is just insane. 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 Uh, I, I've had this watch for, I don't know, six, seven years. Sourced it through a dealer friend of mine, Alex. Uh, I actually didn't source it. He sold it to me. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> he showed up one day, uh, year round. Yeah, I'm coming. I got your next watch. And uh, bro, I didn't order a watch. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I got you. Yeah. He shows up, puts this on the table. Gives me the price, and he says, you pay when you want, but you're not saying no. Yeah. Uh, and I did. It took me about a year to pay it off. Yeah, but a worthy uh, acquisition. But look, all original, with the exception of the hands that are service hands and the pushers, service pushers, yeah. but everything is perfect. It's the value movement, uh, keeps perfect time, looks fantastic, yes. wears great. Uh, love it. 1979, according to the serial. Um, obviously, no box, no papers. Yeah. I don't actually, when it comes to vintage, I don't really believe in papers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's especially when you're, you know, with, with some vintage locks as well, depending on period, you know, sometimes you get blank um, warranties, people fill them out and things like that. And again, when this watch is originally sold, People didn't keep the stuff. Uh, you know, like, you're not even thinking about it. You Absolutely. know what I mean? It's like, the warranty expires. Then what do I need this paper for? And, you know, it just happened. Some people just kept things together. But now I don't think 
Yeah, but that's it was the exception, the point. not the rule, Exactly. Right? That wasn't like... Just some people happen to keep things together, and I was just okay. I kept some things together, Absolutely. but Absolutely. most people, you know, I I don't really harp too much as well um, on the, on vintage people. I don't think it's necessary. Um, let's flip over to this royal oak. This is a very interesting fifteen two or two you have here. Uh, this this is uh, this is quite special actually. So this watch I actually worn only twice. Uh, I've acquired it a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was it just looks coming like out. <laughs> So th this watch is actually 30 years old. Yeah, insane. No, hang on, 20 years old. No, it's from 2003. Okay. Uh, and when I acquired it, it was just coming out of service, full complete service at AP in Switzerland. Uh, and what drew me to this watch is the color of the dial. So uh, it comes. Uh, I, I got it with um, with a new warranty card uh, because it's been serviced, service, yeah. right? Uh, and there's an archive extract, and both confirm that from the reference that the dial is blue. Yes. And as you can see, it is not. No, it is a beautiful, I don't even want to say charcoal. It's it, gray, it, it's, it's gray and blue, like if you go in the, you know, the pantogram, it's like it, in the corner exactly. somewhere. Exactly, that, that's what attracted me, is that the, depending on the light, if it's natural or artificial, depending on the angle, it goes from very light gray to very dark gray and every shade of gray, gray, blue in between. Yes. And that makes it quite unique. What I don't like about it, I'll be frank, and that's why I've worn it only twice, you look at it, it scratches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just smile at it, you got a exactly. scratch. Uh, and so it looks great in a collection, but <clears throat> and it wears great. Oh yeah, and, the, and that, that dial is like, and you do see some 15202s, you know, um, the, the blues fade in different ways, but this, I don't know, however they kept it, it just, the, the tone of, of gray, gray, blue, whatever you want to call it, is just excellent and, and really, um, really vibrant there. So before we get to the Magana, because you have the first <laughs> Magana here that I've been in love with all day, tell me about this Casio calculator watch. All right, so my first ever watch, that's not it, but my first ever watch was a Casio calculator. Yeah. And I remember in junior high, what you guys call junior yeah. high, uh, I got uh, expelled from uh, from a math test. No way. Because I was caught cheating yeah. with it. Right? Yeah, what you got? <laughs> uh, and it always struck me. I mean, I, I've always had a memory uh, of that watch. Fun, fun memories, right? It helped me out a lot. Yeah, right. And uh, don't know where it is, right? And a few years ago, uh, I was walking in the mall, and there's a G-Shock store. Mm -hmm. And I walk in, I was looking for a watch for my, uh, for my daughter. And I walk in, and I find a, a nice white G-Shock uh, that I get. And as I'm looking, they had this vintage-inspired section. And I look there, and there's the calculator. <laughs> so it's not the exact same one I used to have, yeah. but it's a modern take on it. So I got it. I come home and my son sees it. He's like, Dad, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is mine, but you know what? We'll go to the store and get you one. And we did. And uh, we found the actual version that, you version had. that oh. I used to have. And he wears it. I mean, he slapped it on his wrist, never took it off. Oh, Showers with that. it, swims yeah. with it, does everything with they, it. They are pretty durable watches. They are. You know, ex amazing value for money. I paid, what, 150 bucks? Yeah, and this is, this is interesting because this particular one is much bigger than the normal um, calculator exactly. that you think of. Um, and this is just like, it's fun, it's funky. You could definitely, you know, cheat on a mat test really easy with this one, too, because the screen is a little bit bigger. And it's just such a fun, look, cool little watch. It's a highly complicated timepiece. I mean, perpetual calendar, yeah. calculator. Exactly. Uh, lights alarm, up. Alarm, lights up. Makes coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that'd be, that'd be nice. So this is. This is fun. I just I love the the, the case on this one. Cause I've seen a few of the, the other Casio calculators, yeah. but this case shape I've never seen. I actually like the bigger screen. I, I might I might have to hunt for one one of these myself. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll hook you up, bro. And last but not least, I want you to talk a little bit about the watch is started at all. So this would be the first prototype. That is the first prototype of um the Magana watch collection. The the brand. And this is just a stunner. You, you, know, you started with other jobs. You didn't do this, but I just told the people about this beautiful blue watch. So uh, it's it's important to move from drawing to to actual 
prototype because it helps you understand the dynamic of the watch, right? Uh, I like it, and at the same time, I don't like it because it has quite a few things that were wrong and that we managed to correct on the, on the actual drop. So if you put them side by side, this one, you know, from the get-go, feels smaller. Yes. Right? Yeah. And yet, it's the exact same diameter. Why? And this was... I'll do some name dropping now. Mm -hmm. Max Busser is a mentor and a friend. Mm -hmm. I used to work for Harry Winston back when he was running the oh, show. Oh, wow. Right? With, the, with the OPCs and exactly. all that. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and his daughter and mine are best friends. Yeah. And so... When I was showing him uh, the drawings and asking for his advice and opinions, he advised me when I had the first prototype, he advised me because he has the experience that exactly. I don't, right? Yes. He's been making watches for a long time. And thanks to him, I was able to figure out how to improve the product. So on his advice, we reduced the thickness of the bezel. The bezel. Uh, we cut it in half. We slightly increased the diameter of the dial, and we were able to improve the angle of the bevel uh, around ah. the dial, uh, which allowed me to enlarge a little oh, bit yes. the counters mm -hmm. and uh, enhance the length of the, um, of the indexes. Uh, but if I didn't have the actual prototype in hand, I wouldn't have been able to do exactly. that, right? The other thing is that this is completely polished case. Yes. Uh, I it wanted to pay tribute to De Bethune. They've done a couple of unique pieces. With yes, the high polish. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That are excellent. They look stunning. Yeah. But the same issue as with the AP. You look at it, it scratches. It scratches. You know, high polish is nothing. No, nothing you can it do. It looks great, but it is yeah. what it is. Uh, so I decided against that uh, at the end of the day. And then there's the bracelet. Uh, I wanted a casual sporty bracelet that you'd wear that's easy to wear with a velcro uh, scratch uh, lock and um, and uh, when we did this i realized that it wasn't comfortable to have the buckle on the back ah so we sh lengthened the bottom part of the strap shortened the upper part of the strap and now when you wear it the advantage is that ah. You have it on the side of your wrist, so when you put your hand on the table, you it's don't not scratch knocking. it. Yes. You don't, you don't, oh, you don't I didn't even think it. about that. Oh, I love that. So, and it's just amazing to see the original, which, which I love, honestly, but to see how you find it. You know, you, you, this is your rough diamond. Absolutely. You went to the cutters, and you, you polished, you polished, you polished, and then you came up with um, just a beautiful end result, but you know... I may and want then, to try to take this off your hands. And, and then the blue, well, it's a unique piece. I mean, yes. it's, the, it's the original prototype. Now, the shade of blue, that's what I originally wanted because it's the color of fast and yes. my culture. And then, then I realized that, you know, I know in the watch world, there are some colors that we, we, we just love, right? Yeah, yeah. Salmon dials, yes. blue, green. I think purple is coming exactly, up. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but I didn't want to fall into the fashionable exactly. kind of thing, Which right? is good. Is I don't know. Time will tell, right? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's good to, like, circle back because, you know, especially in the past few years, we did go blue heavy. Then yeah. we went turquoise heavy. Um, you know, green green is out right now. And like you said, purple is starting to pop up a little bit. And salmon, salmon is... Huge in the Middle well, East, right? Yes, exactly. Salmon is very, very huge. So, you know, it, it's good to say, hey, I, I want to pause cause I want people to really look at my watch. I don't want people just to look at the color and say, oh, this is another great blue watch. I want people to really dig in and let the essence of the watch come in. So but, start with and I, and I, sorry, I also want timelessness. Exactly. So if you do something that is very fashionable, it looks great for a period, and then people get bored exactly. and move on to something else and stop wearing it. This black dial, always been there, always will be. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Omar, it was such an amazing pleasure to come. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you for um, coming over. In, in your beautiful vi villa hanging with the kids and showing us all these great watches. Oh, thank you Bro, so much again. Thank you so much for the love. Yeah. Thank and, you guys uh, for tuning in.